Hello and welcome to Visa Talks, interesting discussions with interesting people from all around the world. I'm your host for today, Maria Roa, and I am delighted to be joined by Anne-May Pantermeer. Anne-May is a marketing professional with over 10 years of experience in event organization and management. She started her career at Taos in 2009 as the first Taos employee. You have to tell me about that. <laughs> and she has been in the organization ever, ever since. For the past years, she works in the capacity of head of sales and marketing. Anne May has helped in the organization of more than 35 Log World conferences, where she takes care of the program for the Taos track and host and moderate these sessions. Anne May, it is great to have you. Uh, let's start and let's talk. Great, great to be here. Well, I mean, you've been in the industry for like 15 years, what are the most significant chance, uh, changes you've seen in the localization industry over the past decade? Yeah, so actually, you know, I've been uh, in the industry um, this year for 20 years because I've started at uh, Taos in 2009, but before that, um, uh, Jaap van der Meer, who's my father, um, founder of Taos, but he was still part of the local world um, uh, organization. And back then in 2005, actually, I attended my first Log World conference. So I um, did a little bit of uh, small things like uh, packing bags and helping with registration and very simple things. But uh, back then, I actually um, had my first uh, listening in to all of these talks about uh, the industry. So, yeah, 20 years feels like a very, very long time. But I yeah, think... you, you were born in the industry, basically. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> yeah, but I think indeed there's been quite a few changes in these uh, 20 years. So um, from when I just started, it was really the, the change from rule-based MT to statistical machine translation. So the Moses Core project is actually um, an EC-funded project that Taos participated in uh, back in the day. Um so MT started to become really popular and also more open source. So I think that was the kind of the first change. Uh, but also crowdsourcing came a little bit later. We actually um, invited um, uh, the author of the book on crowdsourcing, Jeff Howe, to um, be a keynote speaker at Loke World, I think 2008 or 2009. Um, so that's, I think, was a more of a, an introduction to crowdsourcing in our industry. So as an alternative to that traditional supply chain from the MLVs, uh, agencies, freelance, so crowdsourcing became more of a thing. Um, and around the same time, I think also data became much more interesting to people. So um, it's uh, the data that actually makes the difference when you're training an empty engine. Um, so all of the people sitting on all of their translation memories it's uh, it's gold, it's the new oil. Um, and that was also the time when Taos launched uh, the data cloud for the first time, 2008. So um, yeah, I think Taos was kind of in a lot of these uh, changes, of course, that's why I remember them as well. Um, and then uh, let's see, maybe already 10 years ago, I think we saw the change to neural machine translation. Um, of course, also as a kind of a consequence of the, the data becoming much more important. Uh, so a big jump in quality for machine translation. And then now I think we are experiencing another change with uh, chat GPT and, and uh, large language models that are kind of uh, coming into our industry and um, interrupting or uh, the completely the way that we work. Um, so I would say those are some five big changes that I've uh, been experiencing Probably there's there's a lot more, but yeah, yeah. No, that you mentioned quite a few, and they're great. But I mean, I think it's really interesting the way that you see. I mean, every person that I talk, probably they didn't start in the localization industry. You know, they come from a different background, and then they happened to end up in the localization industry for some reason, mm -hmm. but not really, never did it in purpose. I'm seeing that you were there from the beginning, you know, you <laughs> that was the industry that you started. Is this something that you always wanted to do? Well, um, 
tough question. I mean, I I've I've always been interested in languages. So mm -hmm. I studied English uh, language and linguistics um, at the University of Amsterdam here. And um, yeah, I when then I started looking, of course, for a part time job because I wanted to earn some money. And then, well, Yap had just found the Taos, my my dad, and he said, yeah. uh, "Do you want to work for me? You know, do a little bit of uh, things uh, like bookkeeping, main, maintaining the website, you know, things that I could do kind of in between my classes." And I thought, well, that's great because. You know, all of my friends, they had to work for two full days throughout the week. And I still had a whole weekend because I could just do some hours here and there. And uh, when I was done, he said, what do you like to do? You can work for me full time or you can go out there and, and find a job. But I was actually quite interested in, in everything. It's it's a very um, technical, uh, but also, you know, finding out all of these uh, things that are going on uh, that actually all of the, my friends are using, you know, I remember that Facebook was available in all these different languages and my friends were like, oh, Facebook is now available in Dutch. <laughs> and I thought, well, I actually know a little bit about this, you know, how is this possible? <laughs> so yeah. um, it, it just always uh, piqued my interest. And um, yeah, I, I I started to also get to know the people in the industry and um, yeah, I've never felt the need to leave because it's it keeps on evolving and um, keeps keeps being interesting to me. So. I think that happens with the localization industry. Once I mean, you sometimes just happen to start working in it, but once you do, you don't want to go. You know, no. it is an industry that attracts people really. That, as you say, yeah. you can see every day, so that also makes it more interesting. But yeah. well, going back to the changes that uh, we were mentioning before, we talked about a bit about Ch Chat GPT, artificial intelligence. How do you see AI sh shaping the future of? translation and localization? Well, I think it will completely reshape the future of our industry, uh, but in a very slow way because our, our sector is quite conservative, I think. Um, so what we're seeing now is kind of these two industries of AI and, and translation are kind of converging. So um, we already see that it's embedded in every app, every platform translation is available um out of the wall uh, <laughs> almost and um um so yeah I, I do think it impacts every uh, professional in our industry uh significantly ai um it's like uh, with banking for example it's now becoming it's it has become fintech so with translation the traditional translation industry will no longer be um yeah a traditional translation industry. It's very much AI focused. Um, will there still be a human in the loop? Yeah, um, I think it's very hard to predict uh, what is going to happen. And it's also very delicate, of, of course, because there are so many proud uh, professionals, humans in our industry uh, that have been translating for years and years. Uh, that profession is changing. I think that is what people have been feeling for a very long time, but now it's becoming much more evident. So, um, yeah, I, I I don't know if I can do an, a very exact prediction, but I think there will be a lot more automation, but also a need for a lot more control or co uh, uh, quality checks um, to make sure that, um, yeah, we're uh, ensuring our quality. We're not... Uh, uh, introducing offensive language, uh, discrimination, these kind of things. Uh, so, yeah, automation and quality control, I think, are um, um, two very important tasks for us in the coming. To look at, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Uh, um, what is, I mean, how does Taos approach the balance between these technological advancements and human expertise in localization? Because I know you mentioned it is it is a tough thing to see what the future is, but how are you guys managing this right now? Well, Taos used to be, uh, back in the day, very much a think tank. So we were um, advocating for machine translation from the from the founding of Taos. Um, so we published a lot of reports and articles to kind of help share knowledge and uh, yeah, think tank resource center. Those were kind of the words that were associated with Taos. But 
we're now um, more of a data solutions company. So um, we've evolved um, with the uh, the changes that we've seen in the industry. Um, because we we started gathering data in 2008. Uh, and then we thought, well, we have all this precious data. We should just not... We should not just talk the talk, but walk the walk is, is a phrase that Yap has said many, many times. So we started also developing a few um, solutions just to um, um, share with the industry and make um, yeah, make available. So we launched um, something called Data Enhanced Machine Translation, uh, which is actually customized MT. So we used our uh, our data to uh, improve the baseline MT models, and we've seen up to twenty five percent quality improvements with that. Uh, but we also have our own um, micro task platform. It's community based. It's called the Human Language Project, um, and that's to help uh, customers with data collection, annotation, but also now with evaluation of uh, large language models. Uh, and we also have developed uh, the quality estimation tool or API, uh, which I think now is next to uh, large language models or AI, kind of the, the hottest new product in the market. So I think um, uh, the role of the human has changed from uh, a pure, translate, pure translator uh, becoming a bit more advanced in technology, uh, but also more specialized or niche. So you can be a cultural um, expert to help with the, the content that uh, really needs that human touch uh, or in a cultural, even anthrop anthropological perspective, perhaps. Uh, or you can become more of a data NLP expert to get very savvy with this enhancing and augmenting uh, the data to make it useful. So yeah, I think the role of the human in our industry has only become more creative. And um, the things that we're developing at Taos, I think, uh, are utilizing all of these humans. So whether it's uh, with quality estimation to enhance these models to make make the the output of the API more accurate, uh, or with the micro task platform that's run completely by humans all over the world to perform all of these data uh, tasks. So. Wow, that sounds <laughs> a lot. <laughs> like a lot to take in. Yes, uh, I know you mentioned before uh, the early days with the statistical and then neural MT. I think at that time, Taos data was used by a small group of MT developers. But since 2023, the field has grown immensely. Now with GNA and LLMs, thousands are looking to tailor and enhance this basic models. Could you explain how this contributes to the advancement of multilingual language models? Sure. Yeah, indeed. It's uh, everyone knows that uh, large language models from the big tech, they are trained mostly on, uh, I think, probably 90 percent on English data. So yep. um, everything that we see and, and we use is kind of through an English filter. Um, so it's a, an opportunity for us in the translation sector to um, share all of that data and all of the other languages that we have, um, which is in domain and it's multilingual. Um, so we can enhance the, the models significantly and reduce that English bias. I've been posting a, a little bit about that on LinkedIn as well. Um, so at Taos, we have this, uh, we have 7.4 billion words, uh, which is source words only in, I think, 483 language pairs. Um, so we, we have that data. Uh, it's multilingual and we have, or bilingual. And we're selling that actually um, to, well, the AI world, but also to the translation world now with, um, I think, up to 97% discount, uh, because we also see that um, uh, we want to really get rid of these this this English centric world. Now we we should make all of these AI and large language models more multilingual. Um, so there's one thing that uh, what we're doing to help is to offer all of the data that we have uh, for for a very low price. Uh, but also we are um, uh, trying to bring the two worlds, so AI and translation world, together at our conferences this year. We'll have one in Rome in June, 
and in Albuquerque, New Mexico in October. Um, so we won't just have these language technology MT gurus, uh, but also some innovators from the AI and LLM world. We'll, we'll invite them on the stage uh, because we believe that both worlds can really learn from each other and combined hopefully bring us really closer to the breaking the language barriers, you know, making sure that every human in the world can access information in their own native language. I think combining our, our two industries um, is a secret sauce for that. It is, it is indeed. No, and it is so important what you're saying because at, at the end, I mean, yeah, many people does speak English, but we do need things in different languages and that's why we're here. Ah, well, I believe early this year you wrote a blog about the real world impact of quality estimation. Can you tell us more about the advancements in Tao's QE metrics 2.0 featuring a state of the art crosslink well transformer architecture for precise translation quality predictions? Yes. Yeah, it's of course very much marketing text <laughs> in these these blogs, but yeah, so um this estimate API that we brought out um, probably um, uh, a year ago now. So it's it's powered by all of the data that we have. Um, um, so we're using um, uh, that data to uh, to increase the accuracy of these machine driven scoring. Um, so yeah, we believe that data is really that um, the secret of the Taos QE. Uh, and for version 2.0, we've introduced a new metric by some advanced models that we combine with our own QE metric. Um, so as you say, it's an advanced cross-lingual transformer architecture. So based on the transformer models and then our NLP team, we have a, an in-house team of NLP experts. They are very specialized in, in uh, data improvements and constant fine tuning. Um, so this second release of our estimate API, it shows an increased level of accuracy in the estimation and also much more correlation with the um, uh, human evaluations. So the model is more capable of distinguishing kind of acceptable segments from the not acceptable segments. And I think another thing that we're working on now, um, maybe good to mention, um, especially linking to AI and LLMs is we're now developing all kinds of services on top of the basic quality estimation. So uh, we can train the model to automatically correct the source segments because we're also seeing a lot of times that there are actually some errors or mistakes in the source segments while that causes the, the um, uh, output score of the quality estimation to be low, but it, in fact, there's a problem in the source segment. Um, so we can automatically fix that. Um, we can implement um, error types and severity levels in the in the output scores, or flag um, and filter like offensive language, uh, automatic post editing. So these are all kinds of things that we're uh, working on now to uh, to add to the quality estimation. Oh my God! So this would be version three point zero. Yeah, and four and five and six. <laughs> <laughs> Will people go in? Yeah, I mean, this, this is, yeah, this is the great thing actually uh, about all these advancements that we're having. I do believe everything it is for uh, obviously the best and uh, people. I think we will always need people is just we'll have a different job or we will, I mean, like we will have to do different things or the things that we do now, we will have to do them differently yeah. because we need to get used to change. But it is amazing how fast we're going. So I hope there is many versions, as you say, 3.0, 4.0, because that means that we are growing. You guys are growing. So congratulations for that. And uh, well, we came to the end so fast, but I would like to ask you, is there anything else you would like to share with our audience today? You mentioned a couple events that you're doing. I don't know if you want to talk about them or you want to mention anything else that you guys are working on. So anything else to share? Well, I think it's good to know that uh, for the for the audience to know that Taos is no longer the that think tank. We we have so much uh, so many products um, developed now that are very useful for the industry. So we're doing our best to promote that um, a lot, and we um, we're very excited about that and to keep on also improving the products that we've developed. 
Um, so that's maybe just good to to uh, to share one more time here. And of course, we do hope to see that um, we we do hope to see some of the uh, the audience here at the uh, events that we're hosting this year. Um, actually, in a few weeks we'll be in Tokyo, but um, I believe that we're already sold out of seats for that. It's a kind of a smaller event. Um, and then in Rome uh, in June and Albuquerque, New Mexico in October. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we'll, we'll be um, moving away from the um, uh, the real traditional uh, translation um, topics and really introducing AI uh, into the mix, but also talking about uh, how these two uh, industries can work together. Um, yeah, and it's maybe a little bit cheesy, but to to really break the language barrier, because I think that's why we're all in this industry. Uh, and why we do not leave because we are yet to reach um, that goal. So, um, yeah, I think it's great. If, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, is that through LinkedIn? Should they do it through an email? LinkedIn or with my email is also fine. Maybe we can uh, leave it in the description uh, yeah. for the video goes live. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Good. That sounds great. Thank you for that. Well, uh, well, so that's the end of today's show with Anne May Van, Van der Meer. Please make sure to tune in again to see Anna or to listen to the next Business Talk show where we will be discussing more interesting topics with interesting people from all around the world. Thank you so much, Anna May. Thank you for having me, Maria.